So what we can do here is we're going to take a look at Exercise 21 from Troy Statina's Metal Rhythm Guitar Volume 1. If you don't have the book yet, go to Amazon, pick it up. If you do, dig it out, open it up, and let's go for it. Okay, so here is the progression. This is how it goes. go there's that progression now to start with we're going to hit a power chord from the a string at the seventh fret that's an e5 power chord so hopefully you're able to count the notes up the neck e uh, a b c d e so it's your e5 on the a string what we're going to do now though is include that open e so here's a root E. We're only adding in an extra E here, our open E string. So here's without that open E, here's with it. Here's a little bit more power, a little bit more fullness to it. So uh, that's how you're going to play this E5. Then you jump over here to the third fret, and by the way, that's a whole note, so you're going to go two, three, four. Then you can go to the third fret. But there's something important that we got to discuss here. So we just go here, two, three, four. Doesn't it sound noisy? That's because that low E is still ringing out. And we don't want that ringing out over the C chord. It's going to clash. Doesn't really sound very, very good. And what we're going to do is actually, first, tell me if this sounds better. Didn't sound a little bit more cleaner? So what I'm doing here is I'm using a little bit of left hand muting technique. And what I'm doing is normally when you play in this chord or any of the power chords, yeah, you'd have your pointer right here, your ring over here. Now what I'm doing actually is I'm taking my, my index finger and making it a little bit more flat. So now it's really more I'm really using more of my fleshy part of my finger instead of my tip so I'm using my fleshy part and I'm just moving up just slightly so it mutes out that low E string you know it makes that that noise watch what happens when I uh, I play the chord now I'm playing all three of these strings that By the way, you only really want to play your A string and your D string. But for this purpose, uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that. I'm playing all three strings. It's still making that noise, but this part of the chord is totally drowning that out. You're not hearing that. So, yeah, it decays really quickly, and then again, this, the sound of uh, the actual chord overpowers that, that harmonic sound. Now, really, what you need to do is you still want to mute that out, but go for hitting your A and D string only. So that's something you got to practice over and over again. And you'll get it after a while it becomes second nature and then when you're playing um, chords on your a string or even your d string you'll start to naturally just very lightly touch that string above and by the way you're only touching it lightly don't put your whole your finger all over it and on top of it or 
you know, or try to push it hard or anything. It's just barely, barely, just barely touching it. Yep. Again, you'll get used to it after what, a bit. So we have these two going to play as whole notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then you jump up straight up to third fret on the E string now, which is our G. And then this is a half note. One, two. Go up to fifth fret, which is an A5. Three, four. Go back to the A string. And you go third fret, C5. Up to the fifth fret, which is a D. Now these are half notes, so it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And uh, a good way to do this, um, this isn't so bad You're, to keep track of. You go only go on the third fret, the fifth fret, third fret to the fifth fret. Um, if you were jumping all around in different areas, you know, from here up to the, you know, the tenth fret, down to the first fret to the you know fifth fret it might be kind of hard to keep track if you just count with one two three four one two three four you know you want to really in the very beginning keep track of what frets you're on so what you're going to do here is say the fret number and then just say note followed by by the fret number and then so here's beat one and then i'm going to say three Beat two is actually going to be note, so it's three note, and then five note, five note, so I'm saying the fret number and note. Beat the note, his fret number, is beat one, note is beat two, note, there's beat three, and I say note, that's beat four. So the word note is replacing beats two. And four but you don't really have to count one two three four anymore just say the fret number and a note between and that's going to give you the amount of space you need so it's three note five note and then the next one you get a string three note five note so that's really what you want to do again if you're jumping around you say your third fret so um, you go three no ten no one no five no yeah it's a lot easier to keep track of that instead of like okay thinking three up well, this is third fret this is beat one and then two and then I gotta go over to to fret uh, ten which uh, let's see was that beat two? oh that would be beat three it start to get all confusing you got the numbers of of the count and then the numbers of the frets trying to get those going that could be a confusing mess so it's always easier just to say the fret number three no five no three no five no much easier to just do it that way eventually you're gonna you're gonna hum it but that's a good way to do this instead of confusing everything so that's basically how it goes all the way to the very last two measures you're gonna go through that two times so it's two three four two three four three no five no three no five no two three four two three four three no five no three no five no and end it off we come back to this e5 and then we're gonna hit it two three four one two three four if you notice in the actual tabs it has e5 with these lines connecting to the e5 in the second fret so you want to make sure that you don't go and uh play two three four one two three four because that would be wrong those little lines are called ties and what that means is you play the first chord 
and then you go ahead and you let it ring out over the the next chord it's connected to which is it's going to be the, the same exact chord or note but you'll let it ring out for that duration of time so we have an e5 whole note and we have an e5 whole note but there's a tie between there so that means we're going to play the first e5 but let it ring out over that second e5 in the next measure and it's just going to ring out for that amount of time which is another whole note so it's a whole note e5 whole note e5 with a tie so that means you're going to play the first e5 two three four and just let it ring two three four so it's one two three four one two three four and that's how that works so this progression goes through two times it goes through the the main part two times and ends off with that e5 that three four one two three that rings out um what might be a little bit better is if you can play it longer a lot more you know maybe four times in a row before you end it off uh, or you can keep going more and more times if you want um, so a good thing to do is find a drum beat either if you got a drum machine yourself that you can use or you can go to YouTube you can use a metronome too but it's not as fun as a drum beat but um, but yeah you can go to, to YouTube search up a uh, rock guitar uh, drum beats maybe 100 beats per minute you know put it on whatever beats per minute you want and then you can put it put it on and jam along with it so I have a little drum beat here and I'll show you how you do that if you make a mistake it's no big deal you can stop go ahead let drum beat go a little bit and then jump back in and start all over again so here we go put the volume up going and if you make a mistake I made a mistake no big deal let it keep going So there you go. So there are all the little techniques you can work on. Take your time with it. And uh, yeah, again, find some drum beats so you can keep just jamming on it over and over again. You're not just stuck to doing it two times through. And uh, yeah, it'll make it a lot more fun. And uh, yeah, just have some fun with it. So work on that. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. Otherwise, again, have fun with it, and then we'll move on to the next one.